gathering words. But God are two of the most wonderful and powerful words found in the Bible. We see and experience God's redeeming grace, righteousness, and hope after these words are spoken. Good news always follows but God. It is through God that we are able to see how the impossible becomes possible. For us, it might seem impossible, but for God, nothing is impossible. Raise your voices and sing Holy Ground together. Join me in the unison prayer. God, who gives us light and hope, be with us this day as we hear the story of Noah and Noah's family. Help us to remember your healing grace, mercy, and love for us. Rem remind us again of the many ways in which you reach out to us. May the image of the waters be for us an image of restoration and redemption. Bring us closer to you, loving God. Embrace us with your love. We open our hearts to you this day. Amen. Amen. And friends, as we continue our time in prayer together, I encourage you to, to put uh, what we might be and pray for you in the comment section of Facebook so we can pray for, for you uh, not only today, but in this week ahead. And I want to invite you to, remem to remember, if you'd like to receive the, the church's prayer list, it, it comes along with the, the weekly email. And uh, today, for our prayer time together, I thought it might be fruitful for us just to hear those names that are on our prayer list. And so with that in mind, will you please join me in a time of prayer? Oh God, we, we give you, you thanks for the courage that, that you give each and every one of us. The courage that... that uh, helps us and, and encourages us to, to raise our, our, our voices as we see injustices all over the world. The, the courage that, that helps us to, to stand firmly and to stand our ground. God, we thank you for the example that, that Jesus is to us in our lives. The, that Jesus that, 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 that spoke out when he saw people doing harm and hurting one another and causing one another pain, we give you thanks. God, there are many in our community who are, are experiencing health challenges, a time of transition, and we lift those up to you in prayer. But God, today, we, we, as we come before you gathered as a community, we are going to Say the names of those in our community who have asked for prayer. So God, we lift up Donna Campmeyer. We lift, lift up Ron and Lynn Workman, Sam Barrett, Chelsea, Charlie Sudley, Stacy Dancer, Mike Mitchell, Roger Haney, 
Donnie Holtz, Dale and Dorothy Fry, Veda McRoberts, Wanda Wanell, Walt Stoll, Arlene Webb, Thelma Bray, Roland, Bill and Carney, Connie Jarnot, Kevin Kerskinsner, Ashley Kaufman, Jenna Essman and family, Nicole Whetstone, Jensen Armstrong, Vera Pierce, Haley Elliott, Dallas Maddox, Brian Crawl, Elaine, Mary Heinger, Winton, Daryl and Jeannie Thrasher, Janie Brady, Brady Taylor, Gina Lutz, Jim Stadler, Betty Kalsik, Leland Moore, Doris Hertig, Leroy Grimm, Frank Hertig, Nancy Musselman, Katie, Craig and Debbie Webb, Samantha and family, Stephen Johnson, Kathy Grimm, the family and friends of Tara Barnes, the family and friends of Vic Saya, Linda Gregory, Evelyn, and the Owensby family. God, may you surround them with your love, surround them with your comfort, surround them with your healing, surround them with your peace. And God, in this moment uh, of silence, uh, we pause, we reflect, and we confess our sins to you. God, we give you thanks for, for your son, Jesus, who, who casts the sins as far as the east is from the west. We, we give you thanks and praise for, for the but God moments in our life. The but, the but God moments lead to, to restoration and redemption. God, we pray all of these things in the same way that Jesus taught his disciples to pray by praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, let's continue to worship by singing the hymn of reflection together. Take time to be holy.
Please open your Bible and follow along as I read Genesis 8, 1 to 5. But God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and all the domestic animals that were with him in the ark. And God made a wind blow over the earth and the waters subsided. The mountains of the deep and the windows of the heavens were closed. The rain from the heavens was restrained and the waters gradually receded from the earth. At the end of 150 days, the waters had abated. And in the seventh month, on the seventh day of the month, the ark came to rest on the mountains of Arafat. The waters continued to abate until the tenth month. In the tenth month, on the first day of the month, the tops of the mountains appeared. May God add a blessing to the hearing, understanding, and living of God's word. I want to thank Lou and Jeannie Snyder for helping lead worship today and want to encourage you. You too can help uh, lead worship. If you're not comfortable with, uh, with it uh, and recording yourself on your phone, uh, we, can, we can set up a time where either you can come to the church and I can, or I could come uh, to your, your front steps of your house and, and uh, to record it for you. So just thank you for, to Lou and Jeannie Snyder and everyone that helps us lead worship on, on a weekly basis. And so as we begin the, the message this week, I want to remind you of, of where we went last week. And so last week, uh, we began the, the, this series called, But God. And we looked at the story of Moses and all of the buts that, that Moses said to God before God, uh, was, before Moses surrendered his own will and said, God, yes, let your will be done. Let me be your vessel. And so this week, we're going to turn to another familiar story that many of you have probably heard before, and that is the story of, of Noah. And that story happens in Noah, in the book of Genesis, uh, chapter 6 and beyond. And so I want to, to remind you that every time we read a, a, a verse in the Bible, a, a passage of scripture that has the words, but God in it, there is always always great news that follows. And to the left of, of, of but God uh, in the Bible are some of the most, wor the worst human atrocities that are often uh, characterized by disobedience, rebellion, and, and, do, and doing things that we want to do instead of what God might be leading us to do occur. To the left of uh, uh, but God is, is hopelessness, darkness, hate, and death, and despair. But to its right, following but God, we find stories of hope. We find stories of light, life, and redemption, and restoration. And so in each and in every case where we find this but God, God always redeems us. God always redeems the, the community and the world. God redeems our stories from sinfulness and brokenness so that God's love, grace, and mercy always shine through so that God's love grace and mercy are always experienced and so individuals in the Bible communities in the Bible and and the world in the Bible all have their but God moments and so we're going to continue ex experiencing and exploring these uh, moments as we go through uh, our, the next couple weeks following this and so today we're going to focus on Noah his family, and the animals. And so I want to begin by reading Genesis 6 to you. And so Genesis 6 begins like this. God saw that human evil was out of control. People thought evil, imagined evil, 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 from morning to night. And so what that might be for us today is, is, is blaming others instead of holding ourselves accountable when we do things that are, are wrong and that hurt and inflict pain on one another. We might be shouting at one another in person or degrading and devaluing each other on social media. We might not be taking into account other people's safety and concerns when we go out in public. We might be leaving a path of destruction everywhere we go without even realizing it. We might be spewing hate when we disagree that furthers the divide that each and every one of us is experiencing. God 
was so sorry that he made the human race in the first place, it says in Genesis 6. God was so sorry that he made the human race in the first place, it broke God's heart. God said this in Genesis 6, I'll get rid of my ruined creation, make a clean sweep. Peoples, animals, snakes, bugs, birds, the works. I'm sorry I ever made them. As far as God was concerned, the earth had become a sewer. There was violence everywhere. God took one look and saw how bad it was. Everyone corrupt and corrupting. Life itself corrupt to the core. God said to Noah, it's all over. It's the end of the human race. The violence is everywhere. I'm making a clean sweep. Friends, it is so easy to do evil. It is so easy to slowly let darkness seep into our lives. It is much harder to 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 do the internal work, to bring hope, seek justice, share love, and be the light. It's so much harder to do those things. Why is that? Why is that? You don't have to think when you're doing evil. You don't have to think about how your decisions affect others. You might not even have to think how your decisions affect yourself. And you definitely have, don't have to think about, what would God think if I did X, Y, and Z? You don't have to do the critical self-work needed in the times we have been in and are going through now. We all have this inner battle going on. Our communities have this battle going on. Our nation has this battle going on. And we all have it going on inside of us to different degrees. This battle is between light and darkness, good and evil, hope and despair, having enough and wanting more. Love versus hate. We all have this battle going on inside of our hearts. You see, the people in Genesis 6 were having this battle too. And the later and the and in the latter later things were winning. Darkness, evil, despair, wanting more, and hate, they were winning. We know they were doing some evil, sinful things. We we read this in, in the chapter 6 of Genesis, but we don't know exactly what they were doing. But we do know that they were causing harm to one another. We do know that they were causing pain to one another. Does that sound familiar to our current reality in this past year? You see, it is not unique to us. Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, even Jesus was, was experienced these temptations. And P- the Apostle Paul describes this inner battle in Romans. The Apostle Paul says this, I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. I wonder if you're struggling with that right now. But let, let, let you know that God has wept. God is weeping right now. God is heartbroken at how we continue to hurt one another and cause pain to one another. The parallels from from 2020 and the beginning of 2021 cannot be avoided or discarded as we look at the story of Noah together. I believe we, as individuals and as the church and as a community, are at an arc moment. 
is God asking us to take the brokenness we've been experiencing and build something different? God is calling us to take action. God is speaking to us. Are you listening? Are you listening? God might be calling us to do something very uncomfortable, something we've never done before. Think how Noah might have felt as God told him to build this ark. But Noah still listened. Noah still built the ark one piece of wood at a time. And Noah spent time listening to what God might be saying to him. And so I invite you to, to, to take out a piece of paper and a pen and write these three questions down as the message continues. And so my hope in, in the next week is that you will begin to put that piece of pen, your pen on that piece of paper and begin to write down your thoughts, your questions, and your answers. And so the questions are, how are you listening to God? What is God telling you? And how are you going to act on what God is telling you? I think this is important when we become and have this, this posture of listening. Because what we do know is that Noah listened. Noah listened to God. So how are you listening to God? And so uh, last week we, we talked about the, the, the prayer of daily reflection. And this, this past week in, in the devotion we learned Lectio Divina, where we have a, a piece of scripture and, and, we, and we find it, we, we write it down, and then we read it out loud to ourselves, underline what those, the, the key words might be for each one of us, and, and meditate and dwell on the scripture. I think that's what we need to do to listen like Noah. And then another thing that, that Noah teaches us is that our faith is active, not passive. Our faith, as, as we, we, we seek justice and, and walk humbly with God, is a faith where we seek to, to love one another, to practice kindness with one another. And so you see, Noah uh, uh, continued to, to express his active faith by building the ark. I imagine that might have felt a little bit crazy to Noah when he heard, yeah... Uh, Noah, I want you to build this ark. I know it's, it's really dry right now, uh, but in, in, a, in, in a couple, in a month or so, I'm going to uh, make it where the, the whole earth is, is covered with water. Noah's, I imagine his first initial reaction was like, what? But he listened. He heard that. God spoke to him. And Noah obeyed and did and continued to do what God had asked him to do. And we see this all throughout Scripture, where our faith is supposed to be active and not passive. And so I want to share a couple of passages of Scripture with you today that speak and illustrate this point. The first one is in 1 John 3, 17. And the, the Scripture will also be on the bottom part of your screen right here, right down below. But if someone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need but refuses to help, how can the love of God dwell in a person like that? Our faith is supposed to be active. We are supposed to look out and care for one another. We are supposed to, to step in and help each other out. The next one is from James 2, 14 through 20. It reads, My brothers and sisters... What is good is it if people say they have faith, but do not do nothing to show it? Claiming to have faith can't save anyone, can it? Imagine a brother or sister who is naked and never has enough to eat. What if one of you said, go in peace, stay warm, have a nice meal? I, I have to laugh at the irony of that. And I can't imagine anyone saying to that someone, to someone who is, is, is naked and never having enough food to eat. What good is it if you don't actually give them what their body needs? 
In the same way, faith is dead when it doesn't result in faithful activity. Some might claim you have faith and I have action, but how can I see your faith apart from your actions? Instead, I'll show you my faith by putting it into practice in faithful action. It's good that you believe that God is one. Ha! Even the delete demons believe this, and they tremble with fear. Are you so slow? Do you need to be shown that faith without actions has no value at all? And then we see Jesus speaking to this. And Jesus said this in Matthew 5, 16. In the same way, let your light shine before people so that they can see the good things you do and praise your Father who is in heaven. And then in John 15, 12, perhaps the most profound words on why our faith needs action. This is my commandment, Jesus says. Love each other just as I have loved you. I, I don't think that the people in, in Genesis chapter 6 are, are doing very good at following that commandment. There's a lot of us out right now that are, are struggling to do that commandment. Struggling. We've seen that on display in 2020 and the beginning of 2021. But there is hope. Genesis 8.1 says despite all that uh, violence and evil that was going on, here comes the great news. Genesis 8.1 But God remembered Noah. But God remembered Noah. And so I want to, to see how, how this might ha play out in, in, uh, through a motion picture, through the, the movie of Moana. And uh, for, for those of you who don't know uh, what Moana is, is all about, is, uh, it's a, a story where Moana is, is, is first seen as, as a toddler. She is being told uh, an historic story about the legendary demigod Maui. And according to her grandma, the, she, the gra her grandma is a dramatic storyteller. And so according to her grandma, Maui stole the coveted heart of Te Fiti many years ago. And as a result, lava, a lava demon known as Taka, was born. And the world was plunged into a slow, dark, black darkness. Many parallels to Noah 6 and today, the only hope for, for life lied in the hands of Moana, this fearless hero who had to journey to find Maui and then uh, return the heart to its rightful place. While the other children are, are terrified to, by the story, Ma Moana leans in to the story. She's captivated and not scared. And so Ma Moana's journey is filled with ups and down, failures, and getting back up again, as she sails past the barrier and into the unknown waters. And so I want you to see uh, the, the pictures of uh, Taka, which is the, this lava demon, and Tafiti, which is life, greenness, and, and just sows this, this this, this birthing of hope. This is the battle that is going on inside of us. This is the battle that, it, we, that, that C is on display. And so I wanted to, one, one thing about the movie, though, is that as Moana calls Taka to come to her and the waters part, she sings this song to Taka, and it's called Know Who You Are. And Moana says, I have crossed the horizon to find you. I know your name. They have stolen the heart 
from inside you. But this does not define you. This is not who you are. You know who you are. And to, so finally, to, to put Taka away and to start, stop the darkness, Taka finds peace in Moana's inspiring words. And she turns herself into a, a molten rock, allowing Moana to touch her and place the heart in Taka's chest. And the lava demon crumbles away, reviving the radiant Tafiti. Moana fulfills this ancient quest of her ancestors and discovers the one thing that she's always sought is her own identity. I can almost hear God saying the, the words of that song to you right now. I have crossed the horizon to find you. God, God knows your name. And when we do evil and spew hate, God says, the heart inside you has been stolen. But God knows that that does not define you. This is not who you are. God is pleading with you. You know who you are. I, God, know who you are. And so the, the good news of the story of Noah is this, that despite all the evil and wickedness in the world, God remembered Noah. God remembered Noah's family and all the animals that were out on the water. We read once again in Genesis 8 that, but God remembered Noah. God remembered Noah. Noah. God remembered humans were created in God's image and called all of God's creation very good. Amongst the turmoil of 2020 and the beginning of 2021, God remembers you. God calls you by name and says you are also created very good. When the world tries to define you by affluence, power, and possessions, remember who calls you by name and says you are created very good. So once again, how are you listening to God? What is God telling you? How are you going to act on what God is telling you? And, and remember this, but God remembered Noah. But God remembers you. But God remembers Elaine. God remembers Debbie. God remembers Mike. God remembers Stacy. God remembers Bob. God remembers Sarah and Alan. Remember, you are created in the image of God. Love is at the heart of God and is the very image of God. Love should be the sole principle of every feeling, thought, word, deed, and action you do. You, as followers of God, should reflect what God is. You should reflect love. Join me in prayer. God of all the ages, in your sight nations rise and nations fall, nations pass through times of peril. Now when our land is troubled, be near to us and judge and save May the leaders be led by your wisdom. May they search your will and see it clearly. If we ha have turned from you, reverse our ways and help us repent. Give us your light and your truth. Let them guide us. Through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of the world and our Savior. Amen. Let us continue to worship by singing the hymn, I Love to Tell the Story. Satisfies 
my longings as nothing else would do. I love to tell the story, twill be my theme and glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story more wonderful it seems than all the golden fancies of all our golden dreams. I love to tell the story tell it now to thee. I love to tell the story. Twill be my theme and glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story, tis pleasant to repeat what seems each time I tell it, more wonderfully sweet. I love to tell the story, for some have never heard the message of salvation from God's own holy word. I love to tell the story, twill be my theme and glory, to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story for those who know it best. Seem hungering and thirsting to hear it like the rest. And when in scenes of glory I see to tell the story twill be my theme and glory to tell the old old story of Jesus and his love Friends, as we continue to worship, uh, I, I invite you to prepare God's tithes and your offerings as we continue to do ministry in very profound ways uh, in providing uh, food to our community. And then this Friday, we'll begin to provide uh, meals, breakfast and lunch to uh, the, the kids in our community. And so that is the, the heart uh, of our mission and, and ministry uh, this month and next month here at Silver Lake United Methodist Church. And so as we go to the, the act of worship of the offering, I invite you to give God's tithes and your offerings.
those who were Let's continue to worship, uh, friends, by singing the, the closing, closing hymn together. May you run and not be weary. please hear the, the benediction because it's, it's a weary world out there. And so my prayer for each one of you this week is that you, may you run and not be weary, telling the story of hope, light, and love of Christ. And may God bless you and keep you in the week ahead. Amen. Amen.